Welcome back, ZeroK fans, to the March 2019 1v1 tournament. We're into round four and starting out with a match between Kingstead and 400. A player I haven't actually seen since... Well, it's not this tournament anyway. I was like, since some other time. Because, yeah, this tournament... No, I haven't, I haven't shown up this tournament here. I have not yet been on stream. So we are going to be going on to Sever. A map which... Hasn't really been played all that much. I mean, so there's two maps. There's this and there's Zed. And both those maps are kind of a mess, I suppose you could say. The thing with both of the maps is that they are built around a letter. S in the case of Sever and Z in the case of Z, Which means that you have this weird situation where there's this clear flat path along everything. And then there's these paths that are sort of there that bots can follow but they're really really small paths so it's not the most useful thing in the world to have i like i mean i think there were other two maps that were kind of there but i don't know it was it was a thing it sort of works anyway we are going to have the game 400 looks like they're deciding cloaky bot is their factory of choice I'm kind of curious what we're going to be seeing coming out from Kingstad. Kingstad going for rovers. Very fast rovers, too. Whoa, what the... Oh, right. That's the thing I don't like about this. This is the mini-map when you have Fog of War on. Not sure what happened there. Like, seriously, I'm not sure what happened there. That, that's Kingstad saying, it's dark! You can't see anything out of Fog of War on the mini-map. It just doesn't exist. The, the terrain does not exist unless you look at it. I know that is not... A, I don't know. Maybe there's a map that exists. I think you can make a map that works that way. Where it literally is like this quantum superposition of things. And then when you actually have units gain vision of an area, it just procedurally generates it on the fly. It would be an absolute pain in the butt. But I think it's doable. But that is not this map. This map has a fixed, fixed form. You just can't see it. It's shy. Or you hit the L button, then you don't know where your units have vision. But either way, it's it's kind of iffy. So, Kingstead, like I said, going with rovers, which I don't know if I agree with, because, again, this map, it there's this flat path. And that's all the rovers can take. Whereas bots can go along here. And along, actually, let's just get the thing up so I can show you. So, yeah, red paths, those are pathable, just slow. And purple paths are unpathable. So, yeah, vehicles cannot go through this section on the bottom. Bots most certainly can. Oh, the vehicles. That means 400 is just going to have an easier time harassing. Especially as Kingstad starts to build up. If there's any con is there any contest over this center section of the map, 400 is going to have an advantage. Just because they can come in through the side here and undermine whatever Kingstad is trying to build up. Same thing on Zed. I've actually done it myself. It's a really fun feeling when you manage to pull that off. When you get in the behind, when you get in behind and start wrecking your opponent's base from an angle they didn't expect, that is really cool. And 400 can do that. Kingstead cannot. Kingstead's gonna be relying heavily on a Ravager fencer push, or primarily a fencer push. They might, they might throw in Ravagers. Definitely fencers. Just using that to maintain control over the center and make it harder for units to come in. But at this point, Kingstead's, but Kingstead's gonna be coming in with their fencers. They're gonna need to set up on the defensive, or on the defensive in front of the ramps. It's going to be a challenge for Kingstead to maintain map position. 400 just it has so many more options to undermine Kingstead than Kingstead has to approach the game. That being said, Kingstead could very well still come in in a reasonably good position. I just don't see it. At least not quickly. I could see it eventually, but again, not super quickly. I feel like it's going to be a bit of an uphill battle. Kingstead engaging 400. 400's ravers are forced back. Ronin coming in, however. Ronin are in a good spot for this. I mean, they are they are retreating. Good choice. That is the thing about Ronin versus Fencer. The Fencer can't easily come in because they have to move in and then pull out their guns and then fire and then move again. So the Ronin can easily retreat. The Reavers, however, having a bit of a harder time. Leaving the Scorchers able to come in and start taking out the Ronin if they wanted to. And mostly just pushing 400 to retreat. 400 is going to be... Not too concerned, but as a result of this push, Kingstead's going to be able to take the center. And Kingstead's going to be able to use that for more money. And that means 
you know, more fencers, more scorchers. We're moving into rippers. That'll help get rid of some of the frontline forces if any revenge glaives come in or size. No, not size. King's Dad's playing vehicles. They're not playing Cloaky. We're not going to see size. Not today. Well, might see size. King's Dad could fact switch. Or, you know, Farnage could play size. I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think this map really would work super well for size. At any rate, would work well for darts, though. Getting rid of one of the conjurers. The other conjurer does manage to survive. Does get decloaked, but it will live. Ronan should be... Oh, are, is it going to live? Is it going to live? That's actually a really good question. Are you going to live, Conjure? The answer is... Depends on this knight. The knight is... No, it depends on the Reaver. And the Reaver saves the day. One Conjure survives. The other Conjure, unfortunately, does die. But that gave 400 less time in the center. That gave Kingstead a lot of room to set up their positioning. So 400 is going to have more dead forces. They're, uh, the, well, that's a thing. Hang on. Uh, not sure why the attrition counter decided to be borked, but it just decided to be borked. Okay, well, no attrition counter. Sorry, Anarchid, if you're watching this. I can't seem to get the attrition counter working. Surprisingly, just got borked. It is get borked. Anyway, King's dead and 400, even on economy, contesting that center. And while King's dead does have a surprisingly strong position, 400, I like the use of the knights. That can help deal with the fencers, but that Ripper was a good choice coming in from King's Dad to try to help deal with the Rippers that were, or deal with the Knights that were coming in. Fortunately, the Knight is still able to get in, but the point of the Ripper was more to distract rather than to kill, allowing the fencers to get enough time to soften everything up and letting them get the kill. But 400, despite all that, is going to take that center. 400 winning the fight, taking the center. That'll put them ahead another 5 medal per second. Or, no. No, in total, it'll put them ahead another 10 medal per second. That is a huge difference. Like, 25% metal difference. And Kingstad, they don't have a whole lot of options to deal with this. They are going for the Dominatrix. Bringing out that trump card that Rover tends to go for because, well, I mean, there are other options, but the Dominatrix is a very strong one. And there are the Ravagers I was expecting. Ravager, Ripper, Fencer is going to be a solid combination to deal with this force. The Knights, of course, are the main issue. I, mean, I mentioned during the previous fight that Knights are getting softened up by the fencers. The rippers are basically being used to distract the knights while the fencers do all the damage. Well, the same can be said for the knights because by distracting all the fencers, the Ronin able to get, are able to get in and deal their own damage, which is an important little thing. At the same time, this is exactly what I was talking about. The glaives coming in here from 400, able to get rid of this mason, able to get, well, at least get rid of the construction that I'm building, uh, defenses that I'm building up. I mean, this is kind of ironic. King's Dead have been building defenses to try to stop these glaives, and 400, despite that, gets in there, wipes out the glaives, pushes back the mason, gets rid of a couple metal extractors, pushing King's Dead down to about 33 metal per second compared to 41. And on top of that, another set of glaives coming in here off the back of that, getting rid of even more fencers. And the Ripper-Fencer combo is just not numerous enough to deal with the incoming glaives. There's really not a lot of options. The, the Ravagers won't help either. I mean, the Rippers aren't a bad choice. It's just a matter of numbers and positioning. Kingstad setting up instead with the Fencers, just using those defenses. Like, get rid of the Glaives that way. Set up the Fencers on the ridge. Get rid of anything that tries to come up the ridge. But this is the exact kind of undermining play I expected 400 to do, as I said earlier in the game. And that's exactly what has done, been done. At the same time, Dominatrix is showing their worth. Getting a couple of Reavers, getting rid of all these metal extractors and pulling the center back. So while 400 has managed to undermine Kingstead a little bit, Kingstead already had preparations for dealing with the center proper and already has defenses going forward. The only downside is that Kingstead lost a lot of metal. They lost 10 metal per second to Glaives. And there's still a, there's still Ronin alive too. Glaives and Ronin just wiping out all the metal extractors with no units contesting that. Kingstad is going to be in a bit of a trouble in this situation, but they do have Masons up front. They do have the center being built up. And they're getting Stardust. That's what they needed. And they've got it. Although Ronin are going to be a problem for that. Stardust Stinger might be a good mix. I think the best thing is what they're doing right now, which is to push in and try to attack. At the same time, 400 going into the counterattack on air, and Kingstad is not prepared. Has no idea. They are building an air factory, but they have no air defenses. Their entire main base is vulnerable. The only saving grace is that 400 went for Ravens and not Fe Phoenixes, which means that all the wind generators are going to live. But Kingstad is still in a very tough spot, losing a bunch of metal extractors, could be losing a bunch of caretakers as well. Almost lost the factory, too. Factory... nope. Factory's dead. Oh, no, it's not dead. Just barely being repaired by the caretakers in time. That was close. 
Now at the same time, Kingstad able to take advantage of that distraction, well, not distraction, but able to take advantage of that attack, and the fact that 400 pr provided so much metal to the Ravens that didn't provide any more to the ground forces, that's giving Kingstad the opening they need to take this. I think this is it. All the 400 forces are in this little pocket, and I don't see them being able to get out of that in time. Not in the right position, at least. No one Kingstad's already bearing down on the base. The Ronin are in play, though. Scorches can get in position, there'll be a problem, but the Reavers are already available to stop that. Raptors coming in to help get rid of the Reaver and some Ronin, which, if they do that, then there shouldn't be any problem for the Scorchers getting the Scorchers. Getting rid of the Ronin over the bottom of the map, which, admittedly, aren't really moving forward that much. They are trying to play it safe. The problem, however, is getting rid of all the power infrastructure that 400 has built up. These Scorchers doing a fine job raiding the backyard while King's Dad continues to pressure off the front with their main army. And I think even if 400 managed to survive this, they've already lost a bunch of production. They've done it. They've lost everything they were trying to take away from King's Dad. That, to me, is the key thing here. King's Dad was trying to kill the base. It was trying to kill all the production. It was trying to get rid of the caretakers and everything. And metal extractors. And, well, to get rid of the factory, specifically. On the other hand, King's Dad's gone rid of the factory, gone rid of the caretakers, gone rid of the base. And I think they're going to be running away with the game. 400 put up a great effort. I like to use the cloakies. I like the way that 400 was taking advantage of these little alcoves to try to use them to undermine what King's had done, and had actually done a great job harassing earlier on. I think if those Ravens had come in a little bit stronger on the factory, it would have helped, but I honestly don't think the Ravens were a good idea. I don't think 400 had this position, considering the map, to be able to take that. It's one of the things with this map, actually, that's kind of curious. Because there's only four metal extractors that are really contested, it's kind of easy to know whether or not you're ahead. Because metal extractors, other than these four, you know they're either yours or your opponent's. So you know your opponent is even with you if no one has the center, and whoever has the center is slightly ahead by 10 metal per second. Well, not slightly, but they're ahead by 10, 10 metal per second. So when you have that, you have a situation where it comes down to overdrive. And 1.3 is really efficient, so you can kind of assume your opponent's going to be building as much overdrive as you are. So metal is going to be even, which means that everything absolutely everything comes down to the attrition counter which was not showing up for some reason this game i don't know why sorry about that but everything was coming down to army value and positioning like what units you had how many units you had where they were that is determining the entire game because of the way this map plays and 400 i think just switched to air too quickly i would have liked to see 400 build up a bit of a stronger ground force maybe build up some, some imps i just get that in case a big assault like that comes in have like three imps alongside maybe in a triangle formation. So you get two of them in the front and then another one to come in to help stun whatever doesn't get stunned in the first place. At that point, you've just got this massive force of glaives, run, whatever that was already in this pocket. You just pull that out of there. All these units are EMP'd. Just wipe the floor with them. At the same time, your ravens can come in and go for another pass. Uh, getting rid of the factory would have been great. If that actually had been successful, then there wouldn't have been a follow-up force had what I suggested happened. And even if there had been a follow-up force, you would have already had the proper strategy to counter it. So, I don't think the Air Factory was there when 400 had the best position to put it there. It was a gamble. It didn't pay off. Didn't get rid of the factory. Wiped out a few metal extractors, but honestly, Kingston at that point was already rebuilding just fine. So, yeah, it was... It's a good effort. I really like the harassment over the eastern side of the map. But, yeah, gamble that did not pay off. Anyway, what else do we have here? So, at the moment, we have almost all the games done, actually. Wesleyan, Israel, Expo, and Paul Bell are the only two games that have not been completed. Let's see what's going on there. Looks like we are going to have... Okay, Wesleyan, Israel's done. Expo, and Paul Bell... Okay, we're done. Uh, or those games haven't started yet, but I'm pretty sure those games are... Oh, Malak and Uncas. That is not done. I I guess I could check. I feel like that's going to be a bit of a one-sided game, though. And it's probably almost done. Uh, see anything else? No, looks like we are basically... Are we waiting for the reporting? I think we're waiting for the reporting. Oh, well, Malik and Uncast are still going at it. You know, let's let's just check it out. I, I really should just be checking this stuff out. Like not questioning it, just you know. See the different games. People want to see all the games. Why not? It's not gonna take any less time. I mean, I'm waiting on the games. So let's watch all the games. 
So we're going to be in Astral Valley, which is a map that is very linear, very wide, not very tall, and has a tendency to, well, get a little lopsided. Just it's, it's a famine map, and it's very center focused. If someone takes the center as middle as much as they can, it's going to determine a lot. Although it's not quite that center focused. My bad, misremembered it. But still, it's a very famine map. Not a lot of metal. A lot of con a lot of forces vying for whatever they can get. And Uncast coming in with vehicles or light vehicles rapidly getting everything. Malric the Cloaky Bots basically just feeding them into all these all these fencers. I don't think Uncast has really lost any fencers yet. Gotta figure out going to the attrition counter. I'll check that out later. But yeah, this is absolutely nuts. This this is mad. Uncast are they? They're. I mean, if more the fact that I know this game lasts longer than fifty than eight minutes, I would think that Uncast is going to win off this. And indeed, no, they don't. There is a scythe coming here, barely defending. Malric actually able to expand along the southeast side of the map during this fight, so they are not behind at all. In fact, Uncast has fallen behind in terms of metal. All these Nimbus is coming in, doing what they can, and what they can is quite a lot to get rid of Uncast's expansions. On top of the size coming in, which these fencers are dealing with eventually. The size unfortunately stopping being microed at one point, which led to them being dead. But Uncast still has the stronger army. Uncast is still in a position where they can deal with everything that's being built up. I would like some darts just to help get rid of some of these forces here, but the scores will do fine. I mean, the phantoms, I'm not sure what the point of the phantoms was. But I do agree with the use of the Nimbuses. The Nimbuses actually getting rid of basically all of Uncast's army, which was most of their advantage. However, Uncast able to simplify the board on top of that. Malarik lost most of their forces in the process of that fight. The Nimbuses are still alive, but so are the sides. But so are a lot of forces coming from Uncast. Uncast, despite all that, still managing to maintain a reasonably even metal spread. And turn that into a lot of Scorchers. And get rid of the commander on top of that. Malric now starting to fall behind. They have still been able to expand reasonably well over to the south, but it's just a matter of time. Like the southern expansion, it's you know it's doing a reason, decently good job, but you know eventually it's going to be just overrun. I mean, maybe not even be overrun. I don't even know if it's going to be attacked. I feel like Uncast is not necessarily going to go for it, but they are setting up to at least defend against what have been built up or taken down over the south side of the map, and they could decide to go from there to just take out everything else. Because why not? Just wipe out everything. Makes sense to me. Because if Uncast gets rid of Malric expansion, that's going to be game. That's all Malric has had. They don't, have, they don't have anything in the main base to rebuild. They have storages coming up, which I don't agree with. Like, why continue building storage? I guess, okay, the commander's dead. That does make sense. But they are using enough metal. Like, this isn't a problem. They actually don't need to use storage. They're not accessing. They are managing to get a bit of harassment in, but yeah, the thing is, Malric, just build more metal extractors. Just rebuild the metal extractors, reclaim. I like the storage used for reclaim. But again, they have 50 metal per second build power. This this is just a matter of getting the actual resources. Just get the metal. You're fine. Plenty of reclaim available for you, too. That's what? 2,000 metal? 4,000. 4,000 metal within a very... You know, 3,000 metal within just the base. Not even trying to get outside of the base. Just inside the base. The stuff that's not contested. Malarik sends two or three works. Actually, one of the caretakers could get some of that. But mostly sends two or three conjurers just over... Reclaim all this stuff. It's gonna be great. Unfortunately, the time for that may have passed. Uncast coming in with a bunch of scorchers, not gonna be enough to wipe out anything, but it's still enough to keep Malric's forces down, to keep the army somewhat small. And you have the crashers coming in that'll help get rid of the Nimbus too. This is gonna be difficult for Malric to hold on to. It's not impossible though. Again, this is still fine, and I would just like to see the conjurers come in and start reclaiming. I like the fact that the rebuilding is happening. That's good. But reclaiming is the best thing to do right now. That is going to be the most efficient way that Uncast... Sorry, that Malric is going to be able to get back all this. And they're doing that! Perfect! All right, cool. Good job, Malric. So, Malric should be able to get 25 metal per second, be reasonably even with Uncast. Again, Uncast is still kind of winning the army game. But not by much. Only by 400 metal. Only by, like, 2%. Or no, 1%. No. Sorry, no, 10%. By 10% advantage. But it's... You know, it's not a huge advantage. That kind of advantage, it comes down more to positioning and unit type than it does to anything else. And since that most of this is crashers, and the, there's nothing contesting the Reavers, yeah, Malric's in an okay spot. Of course, that's kind of how it goes with famine maps, is that it does become a little bit difficult to maintain an advantage, just because, well, especially a large, sparse famine map like this one, it's really difficult to maintain the advantage because there isn't a lot of metal. 
So you can't easily rebuild. You can't easily build large armies, but of course your opponents can still build up defenses, or... I mean, if Reclaim happens, that's actually really effective, because that starts to advance the stage of the game. Like, Malric is actually ahead of Uncast, thanks to Reclaim. Uncast can only do so much having attacked, but again, that's what makes it slow, is that Reclaim becomes a dominating economic force, and that means the game just tends to go back and forth. However, this is what I was talking about. Get that southern expansion. Take it out completely. These fencers should be able to wipe out all this stuff and probably wipe out Uncast's entire hopes, but what the... This, okay, sure. I guess considering Uncast does need to take care of the forces that are coming in from Malric, it's worth sending the fencers north, although I wish they'd been on fight move. But yeah, I see the logic here. Send the fencers north. That'll allow for Uncast to get rid of some of the stuff Malric's building up. But again, Malric, they've got a lot of metal to work with. But this is not going to be used up quickly. It's over 3,000 metal at 15 metal per second. They've got a good four minutes of that. So Uncast is going to be having a bit of a hard time because Malric is able to keep the game even. If Malric put in a few more metal extra... Or a few more... Actually, a few more metal extractors, yeah. They rebuilt their entire main base completely and did the reclaim then they'd have the advantage. They'll start to escalate things. And again, Malric coming in, harassing the very expansion I was hoping Uncast would harass with Malric's. But no, Malric is actually really taking the upper hand. They can hold off this attack coming in here, which is a tall order. No Crashers, but a lot of Fencers. I don't know, the Crashers are behind. However, the Reavers coming in, scaring everything else off. Reaver-Nimbus combination would have been, I think, beatable, but it would have been a Peric victory. And Uncast has already donated thousands of metal to Malric. I doubt they want to donate anymore. Malric, that being said, has taken most of Uncast's static economy, at least in the northwest. The center is still reasonably strong, and the main base still has 10 metal per second just for free. So, that's 18 when you consider the commander. And incidentally, of course, the commander is dead for Malric, so Malric does have that slight disadvantage in this case. I'm... wait. The commander is only... no, commander's dead for both. My bad, we actually have no commander in the game. Yeah, so... Neither commander's alive. Uncast, never mind, only has about 12 metal off of the main base. But even with that, this is still a great defense by Malric. Like, the one thing I want to see Malric do is continue to build more and more conjurers to reclaim. And obviously build a few more metal extractors. But keep building more conjurers to reclaim. I mean, that, that section of the main base is only 3,000 metal, which is now down to, like, 1,000. But there's a lot they can take without too much issue that's currently running at 5,000. And growing, because Uncast keeps throwing forces in, they keep getting destroyed. So, this is... This is probably going to be Malric's game in the long haul. It kind of comes down to how well Malric is able to maintain their army, but I really like the way that Malric has been playing this. A lot of riot units, they know their opponents are going for stuff that's a bit more... Fencery... Well, okay, Fencery is a actually a bad thing for Reavers. But a lot of Scorchers, a lot of Raiders, just... Going for stuff that can be easily dealt with by Reavers. And the Nimbuses also help out. And the Nimbuses also help with defenses if they need to wipe out defenses. If Malric needs to wipe out some of Uncast's defenses, it's not too big of a deal. And the AA is also not too big of a deal. So Uncast can really get this reclaim going, and they have. Sorry, Malric can get the reclaim going, and they have. Unclass can't. All Malric really has to do is hold on to this, get the reclaim going, really build up a sizable strong army, and then turn that into a push. The one concern I have is that Malric is playing as Cloakies. They have Phantoms, that's not a bad choice. They have Knights, that's also not a bad choice. But it is a bit difficult to make a late game army for Cloakies. However, with the amount of money that Malric has, they could potentially switch off to Striders to get a Dante. I think that would do the trick. And again, this is this has been a really strong setup for Malric as far as just keeping their army alive. I mean, if you look at the numbers, the army value for Malric is about. 5,000 metal higher than for Uncast. Again, it kind of is a question of the particular types of units, but at this point, the numbers are so high. I'm just thinking, you know, it's kind of coming down to sheer numbers. That's it. Like, sooner or later, especially with all the stuff that Uncast is losing across the map, Malric's just going to be able to out, just muscle out Uncast. As we're seeing right now, the Reaver's just walking in the fencers. They don't care. Four Reavers versus four Fencers, that is going to be a win for the Reavers. The Fencers will take their pound of flesh, but those Reavers will win. And only one of them dies in the process, too, so very efficient from Malric. That should be the beginning of a push, considering Malric has this south or has this northwest section taken. A two-front two push, when Uncast is basically just has a bunch of anti-air for defense. This is game, and Uncast knows it. 
That is GG. Ungas throws in the towel. Malric takes it. A grindy fight, but a great use of reclaim. We saw earlier on Uncast managed to push Malric to the brink. But the big mistake I think Uncast made, they never assaulted the southeast. If Malric lost this expansion over the southeast, they'd have had half the economy they were working with. Uncast could have just pushed in from there. But unfortunately, Uncast got close to that. I think the fences were being were pulled back to try to deal with some of the Reavers coming in, which is understandable, but a fight move on the fencers all the way through would have wiped out any of the Stardusts. The Lotuses would have been a mild problem, but not enough to make the whole push fail. And that would have been a huge boon for Mal for Uncast. But Malrek never lost it, so they were able to just work off Reclaim for a while. Take about... how much Reclaim did they take? 8,000 Medal of Reclaim! Holy crap, that was their army value for a short period. It's pretty much all Reclaim. So, that was the thing. Uncast just went... I'm just gonna keep holding a contain. It's like, no, you're playing 0k. Contain doesn't work if your opponent has a bunch of stuff you kill, you let die. And you aren't taking out expansions during the contain. So, yeah, Uncast did not manage to take that. Strong opening, but unfortunately not a strong enough finish. Malric, great comeback. So that is gonna be it for round 4, I believe. Yes, it is. So we're gonna be moving on to round 5 after a short break, so stay tuned as it is going to be the last couple rounds of the tournament. Oh, wait, what? Hang on. Sorry, someone's pointing out one thing I apparently should mention. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Someone's saying the reclaim, the map feature, or lake feature reclaim is insane. Well, yeah, 2,000 energy. 1,500 metal? Okay, so this isn't so much a famine map as it is a reclaim map. You only got, like, what is it? 20 metal per second, 25 metal per second you can take kind of evenly, but boy do you have a lot of reclaim to work with. So that is, anyway, that's that, so yeah. And no, the attrition widget just seems to be broken. I'm gonna have to fix that during the break, which will be up in a couple minutes, so yeah, like I said, here's the new bracket, standings. Apparently Mana 12 is on a tear, and yeah, Mana 12 is on a tear. Undefeated so far. So we're going to be getting back to that in just a moment. Not necessarily Mana 12, but necessarily a game. Stay tuned for round 5. 